In this After Effects tutorial, we create a glitch for clean titles. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film, and in our last tutorial, we did a digital distortion or this sort of glitch effect for an entire scene with more of a, a digital feel. But I think in other applications like in doing simple and clean text, I still think you can apply the glitch effect and make it look very, you know, minimalistic and, you know, not overwhelming. I, I think in this case, applying a glitch effect to clean titles could just be like a nice uh, transition on until the full title. So I think that's pretty interesting. That's what we'll be doing in this tutorial is seeing how we can apply the glitch effect to our clean titles. So I'm going to go over to a new composition over here. I already have a background in here and the entire design of the title comes through good typography and very minimal design. So we're going to go grab the text title tool and we're going to type out our first piece of text, which I'm going to call it a uh, clean uh, glitch. And go ahead, I'm going to change this color to just pure white. Uh, and of course, you know, coloring matters and being able to work with good typefaces also is a huge standpoint. So I'm using the typeface Gotham. And of course, you know, you probably are not going to have this. So you might want to go ahead and search it up. Uh, of course, it's a sans serif font. So of course, you might want to try to figure out what other fonts, uh, sorry, excuse me, typefaces will work for you. But in this case, I have my text here. I'm gonna come here and create a subtitle and I'll just type in title. And I'm gonna go ahead and start working with these two, uh, you know, the main title and subtitle here to kind of make it blend nicely together. Of course, you know, this looks good, but of course we can create some variation here. Maybe I'll set the top font here, sorry, our top text layer to like a light sort of version. And I'll go ahead and make it just a touch bigger as well. So it just kind of stands out a little bit more and that should be interesting. I'll go ahead and offset this. So I think this is a good, you know, place to line up text. Of course, let's go to the align tab and let's go ahead and horizontal alignment right this. So they're perfectly matched up like that. So this is a good opportunity to create some shape elements. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and I'm going to just create like a nice background behind our text like this. And I'll put the shape layer underneath our text and I'm going to change this fill to black. And then I'm going to go to hit T on my keyboard for opacity and set it down to like 33%. And that should be good. And then I'm going to go back to the Align tab and just center this up. If you don't see the Align tab, go up to Window, Align. And that was a little bit, bit for a center there. And we'll just put that right there. But then, you know, then what I'll do is just make sure the clean glitch and the shape layer are selected and then center those up like that. So that, that means they're right in the middle. And then we'll come back to the title down here and you know, bring this down by a touch. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the Pen tool here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just draw out like a straight point like this. Hold down shift to create a straight line and I'm gonna click, go straight down like this as well. And we'll go ahead and turn off the fill by clicking the word fill, click on none, click okay, go to stroke, turn that on to solid color and go ahead and change your color. I'm using a pixel count of three and we come here, see what we have. And of course this isn't perfectly, you know, balanced here. So what we can do is just go into the shape layer here go into the contents, go into the shape, go into the path, select the path, and we can just come here and select some of these points and kind of work with how these are positioned up a little bit. If you weren't perfect there, of course, maybe we'll bring this in by a touch. That looks good. And then we'll come in here, duplicate the shape. So make sure the shape is selected. Go up to edit, duplicate, and we'll go into the shape two, go into the transform shape two, go to the rotation, and we'll set this to 180 degrees. And it will be on this side. We might need to Come here, go into the position for the shape two and kind of put that back in its spot. For shape two, we'll go back into the stroke here and we'll set this color to white so it kind of matches up with our text. And you know, for the most part, we have a nice design in here. Of course, what I would like to do is go to add and add a trim paths and open up trim paths, add a keyframe for start and go forward to like the end of our animation, maybe like seven seconds or something, and just increase the start by a little bit. So there's a little bit of you know animation going on here and just a little bit of movement so it's not a static image once we're done with the glitches. So for the most part, we're ready to go. This is just my design. There's a ton of way to design these sort of clean titles, but let's go ahead and create the glitches in the distortion map. So if you watched my last tutorial, you should probably already know how to do this, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab the rectangle tool, turn off the stroke here by clicking the word stroke and set that to none and go to the fill, click the word fill, turn that on. And we'll go in here, set the color to white. It doesn't really matter what color you use. So what we're gonna do is maybe just turn off all these layers real fast and we're just gonna draw out like these thin rectangles going all the way across like this. It doesn't have to go all the way across, but just create like these thin rectangles or if you want, you can also create little thick ones. It doesn't really matter. But the thing is, this should just be random. There's no objective to it. 
and that's looking good. And then what you need to do is once you have like a nice little design here, go to like the beginning of the timeline, maybe go to like three frames or something like that. Go ahead and split that layer and delete it or just drag the, you know, in point in or sorry, the out point in. It doesn't really matter how you do it. You go up to edit split layer and that will split the layer like I just did it. So now that we have this shape layer in here, we need to go ahead and create several more variations of this. Uh, so make sure the shape layer is not selected and just draw, keep drawing out several more like this. And you know, you don't have to put a lot of detail into it. Like this should be good enough. And we'll bring up the endpoint, go to six frames, split the layer, delete it. And you know, maybe this one start right over again. What we want to do is almost create this animation of shape layers going across our timeline for the duration of the glitch. So in this case, I would really only need like three seconds of these shape layers. So I would go through this three frames at a time until I'm at three seconds. So go ahead and continue to create these and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have enough shape layers going on to six seconds. Like I said, three seconds could be good enough. But once you're done with all these shape layers, go ahead and select all of them, go up to layer pre-compose and we can call it a uh, distortion map. And click OK. And now we have all of our distortions in here going on for about six seconds here. And that's exactly what we need. And then what we need to do is go up to Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. And then we'll go up to Effect, Distort, and we're going to add Displacement Map. And then we'll come here and turn off the Distortion Map. We'll go ahead and turn on everything else. Then we'll go back to our Adjustment Layer over here. Go to Displacement Map Layer, and we'll set this to Distortion Map. And this is going to distort the entire image, even our background, which is not really what I want to do. Uh, but we'll go ahead and get right back to that in a second. But we'll go to max uh, horizontal displacement here and see if we increase this. Things start to really glitch out. Even our background's glitching. I'll keep this here for right now, but we're going to go ahead and apply this separately to everything here in a second. So even though we can change the parameters up here, we don't want to do that. We want to go ahead and set these down to zero. And then we're going to go, go ahead and type in an expression. So I'll click the stopwatch for max horizontal displacement and type in wiggle, open parenthesis, and we'll do like one comma 1000 close parenthesis. And basically this is gonna just jump the image all over the place and it's not gonna be static. So we're kind of getting that, you know, unconsistent glitch effect all over the place, which I really think that works for this effect. Then we'll go back here to the top and I'll click the max vertical displacement, I'll click it, and type in wiggle, open parenthesis, one comma 500 close parenthesis. And now we're gonna have this entire glitch going all over the place. And what I like to do, since these you know elements are being grouped together, um, I don't like actually using the adjustment layer for all of our images. I like to copy the effect, turn off the adjustment layer, and individually paste the effect into each of our own layers in here, just so it's everything's not moving together as a nice group. Things are kind of isolated, and you know things are all over the place. And we don't need to apply it to the background. So in this case, you know we have this glitch happening all over the place, and I think that's you know pretty good. So we're just about done, but let's go ahead and customize this glitch just a little bit more. Let's go ahead and select everything except for our background layer. Go up to Layer, Pre-Compose, and we can call this one Glitch Setup or something, Glitch Design. It doesn't really matter. I really don't know what to name these things, but, <laughs> you know, move all attributes into new composition. Click OK. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this layer, turn it off the top layer, go to our bottom layer down here, and go to the Rectangle tool. And we're just going to draw out like a rectangle mask, kind of, you know, like this and set it to subtract. So this way we won't be able to see the main you know, title until you know, after a few glitches here and I think that'll be fine. So if we don't have this on, you know, we're gonna be able to see like the main title most of the time and we don't wanna see that because this is like a nice transition and you know, that's what we need to do. So what we can do here with this top layer is you know, maybe bring in the endpoints by a little bit. So you know, here we have nothing and then we can see the main glitch title here for a second then split this layer, you know, bring in this endpoint. So we see it for a second, it goes away, it goes back to the glitches. And of course, you know, we can always adjust the mask if we don't like it in that area. You know, we might just want to cut off the entire middle of this, which is totally fine by me. Go back through here and just variate this by a touch. And then, boom. All right, so now we have all these glitches happening, and then we want it to stop here, say, at like two seconds or something. So we'll go back into our glitch setup, and we'll go ahead and select all of our layers, go to Edit Split Layer, bring these to the top, and we'll just go ahead and color code these real fast so it doesn't look like we're like a big mess. All 
And then of course we can just delete the adjustment layer and distortion map here at the top. And then of course go into each of these layers, our orange layers here, and just delete the displacement map on each of these. So basically this will stop the glitching. If we go back to our main comp over here, you know, it goes back to normal. And of course we need to go down to our, you know, our mask down here and split that layer and just delete it right at that endpoint. So boom, it just goes right into it. And now we have our titles with our slow stroke animation there. So and then for one last thing I would like to do is add motion blur to it. Now you can't just turn on motion blur down here because there really isn't any true animation going on unless it's just the strokes up here. But what we're going to do is we're going to force it. Go up to layer, new adjustment layer and go to effect uh, time and apply the uh, CC force motion blur effect. And that's pretty much it. So basically we're just applying this uh, effect to add motion blur and then you should be ready to go. Basically that's how you can do this effect. And if you are following along with this tutorial, this is a, what you should have gotten and it will load any moment now and go action. <laughs> All right, here we go. So this is what you should have gotten some nice little glitch effect just like this before the, the title comes on. And I think that looks really interesting. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects tutorials just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching the video and I hope you have a good day.